Well, let's preview the debate tonight with three colleagues from the Parliamentary Press Gallery. Manon Cornelier is an editorial writer with Le Devoir. Bob Fife is the Parliamentary Bureau Chief for The Globe and Mail. John Iveson is a columnist with the National Post and Parliamentary Bureau Chief for Post Media. Good to see you all. Thanks for being here. Thank Excited you. for tonight? Interested. Interested. Why? Be, but because it's the only English debate with all those six leaders. This I have a problem with the sixth one, but that's another thing. And uh, so, and it's so tight that they have to make an impression. Really, all of them, if they want to uh, improve their their score. Yeah. And uh, I think Mr. Scheer have a lot on his shoulder, especially after the French debate of last week, where he lost ground in Quebec. So we have to recuperate that maybe elsewhere, especially in Ontario. So uh, he has to perform particularly well. Okay. That would be the, an interesting point. Bob, you don't have to answer whether you're excited tonight because I know you are. So <laughs> tell me, tell me what you'll be watching for. What do you think? Well, the, the story uh, uh, you think starts perhaps where tonight? Well, uh, look, I think. It comes down to Andrew Scheer. He had a very, very bad week last week, mm -hmm. and it started with the uh, climate change protest, and then it went into the he wasn't an insurance broker that he claimed he was. He got beat up badly in the French TV ad debate. Uh, then the dual citizenship in the University of Regina. By the end of the week, he was. Uh, uh, crippled going into the, the end of the week and he needs to come back here and perform very very strongly in front of an English speaking audience but the problem Peter is this format six leaders five moderators how is he going to be able to get his message out to Canadians I, I think it's going to be a real struggle for him right maybe John he, he announced today free admission to Canadian museums maybe it should have excluded journalists and moderators <laughs> right. and they would have had more time on the stage because yeah, it's I mean, happening the debates happening at the Canadian Museum of Nature yeah it's what are you be, watching for tonight well it's gonna to be tough for him exactly that I mean it's, it's it's all about Andrew Scheer it's all about Ontario I mean let's face it this debate is starting at 4 p.m. in in, the, in British Columbia not many people are going to be watching it there I guess not many people in Quebec because uh, they've They've already seen the French language debate, and somehow he has to turn around this. Uh, and it might not be too dramatic to say this is his last chance. Um, you know, I think that we're already seeing his negatives rising. This same-sex abortion thing is continuing to dog him, and I think he needs to be a little bit less cautious. I think he's a very cautious man by by nature, and I think he should have come out before the campaign even started and, and, and had his JFK moment and said, you know, as JFK did when right. he talked about his Catholicism, talked about here's my position, it's not that different from Justin Trudeau's position. And Justin Trudeau has now changed his position, why has he done that? Is that just to curry favour with, with right. the electorate? Uh, I, I said Museum of Nature, it's but, Museum but just, of History across the history. river but, and ghetto. But look at uh, Jagmeet Singh uh, and uh, Elizabeth May are equally want, are going to be speaking up and talking over everybody as well because they're fighting the same voters in a way, yeah. and they're fighting each other. And so I don't know how. And they're going to fight Justin Trudeau after fight their Justin voters. Trudeau. So I don't know how this is going to work out. But if we lo with the, the 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 last one we saw where Mr. Trudeau didn't show up, there was a lot of screaming and talking between May and Jagmeet Singh over Sheer. And mm -hmm. I, if it turns into one of those kind of messy. Um, Plus we, have, plus we have five moderators. Yes. five moderators, five moderators, and how, the, how is that going to work? Yeah. It sounds yeah, very cumbersome. I'm sure they tried for seven, but they could only get five. But. Yeah. It would be interesting to see how Mr. Trudeau do in this, uh, in this uh, format, because there they will have this uh, group debate, uh, which will be a lot more, and he, he will have a lot of people against him, because you need to convince uh, NDP-leaning uh, voters, I mean, not those that were decided, but those leaning, the same with Greens, to be sure to uh, shore up, shore up his, uh, his support, because right. uh, if he wants to really come first and uh, even have a majority. So, uh, but his target, he, he said it many times, is Mr. Scheer. He, he's counting on the, the opposition of their two style, their two policies, and, and so on. But with this format, it will be a one-liner show to try to go across in the social media and so on. So it will be difficult to go in more depth in, on yeah, some Yeah, I issues. think that's, that might be true, eh? that if you know you've only got 10 or 12 minutes of FaceTime, uh, you, they're, they're working today and probably have been for days on what's the, what's the zinger line we can get out there in that 10 minutes that's going to land that then gets repurposed on social media and so on, right? I mean, watch for that tonight, I guess. But, um, 
I, I think what's interesting too is when you when you talk about who the voters are and you talk about the Ontario audience, um, is that really what this is about? I mean, there, you know, we, how many times are we going to hear Doug Ford again in the debate today? <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I should tell him that Justin Trudeau had an event today where he was speaking with teachers at a school, and it, I think it was supposed to be in concert <laughs> with a big support workers strike in the schools in Ontario. That didn't happen, but it didn't but stop it, him from meeting and talking about cuts to the Ontario education. System. And it's working for him. I mean, you know, I think. That well, that's why I think is the narrative tonight. No matter what happens to Justin Trudeau, does he just keep coming back to your choices? Go forward or go backwards? Oh, that's yeah. it. Yeah, Trudeau's, that's Trudeau's is now in a front runner situation and I think he just has to keep his his head down uh, I think the one thing talking to people after the French debate that that he uh, he looked a bit smug and he smirked a bit when he when he thought he'd landed a, a blow and a couple of times he turned to the moderator and kind of yeah and smiled I, and I don't like, think people see, like that and, and, and if he does that again tonight that will probably work against him but I think if he runs a pretty safe campaign and keeps mentioning Doug Ford and um, you know as I, I think is all about Ontario and I think in the moment the Liberals are clearly ahead in Ontario, and unless the Conservatives move from somewhere like 35% support to 40% support, they're not going to win this election. Yeah, but, but you know, the, the, the Conservatives are stuck at 33% mm. and have been since the election campaign started. The Liberals move up a little bit and then fall back down if you're looking at Nick Nanus' tracking yeah. poll, which I think is pretty accurate. Well, the Abacus data poll we've we, right. we had tonight, but, they're all showing the but same kind of But there's no the majority same. government no. here for Justin no. Trudeau yet. Right. No. And, um, you know, he'll, he probably will get a strong minority, but he's not going to win a, a, a majority government. So this was why he's got to somehow coalesce that Ontario vote. He's, and whether he can do it, I don't know. Because, again, this format doesn't seem to me to be one that's going to work for any of the leaders. And it's where they draw from, too, right, Mano? If you look at, so Justin Trudeau's got a lar larger pool of potential supporters yeah. to pull from yeah. with NDP the Democrats and, and then, or sorry, with the NDP and the, and the Greens and so on. Yeah. Andrew Scheer's got a narrower pool of, yes. I mean, he's got, presumably, he's got all the conservatives minus the couple they're of percent. Right. They're already there. The couple of percent that have yeah. gone, gone to Max Bernier. And is he... Is he saying enough to uh, four or five percent of the progressives that might consider, you know, you call them the the red Tories that might come over to support uh, Sheer? Uh, is he messaging them, or are they? I don't think so. Uh, and for him, it's a problem to have Mr. Bernier there because he will have he will end up being uh, attack on his right, and to to reach out to the blue liberals, okay, that. In many elections, I vote conservative for a reason, fiscal reason and everything. Mr. Scheer, I've not proposed. We haven't seen his uh, platform and his financial plan either, and he doesn't propose to really clear up the deficit. Uh, it's for the next mandate. So. It, it, I'm not sure that this is enough to convince blue liberals to shift to Mr. You Scheer. You know what his biggest problem is? He does not have a killer instinct. Brian Mulroney had a killer instinct. John Cretchen had a killer instinct. When they were in trouble, they came roaring back. He doesn't seem to have that. He turns the other cheek. What would he come back on? I mean, if he had a killer if instinct, if he had a killer instinct, which, go, what would he, be? he would go hard after hard after Trudeau on the deficit spending, on failure to have any leadership if we run into a global recession. The fact is, our economy is changing significantly with artificial intelligence coming fast down the track. No answers to that. I mean, he has a message he could go hard off of Trudeau, but he hasn't been able to do it. The polls would suggest them some vulnerability there, John. I mean, if, if the, the Liberal record's so great over the past four years, why are they tied in the polls with Conservatives? It should be a runaway uh, majority race again, Well, I think it, that, that point that, that he hasn't uh, appealed to the, the sort of more centrist part, I mean, I think there are a lot of centrist voters in this country who are thinking that the Liberals are too far left for them and the Conservatives are too far right for them. And they've nobody really to vote for. And I think that there's still a, an undecided vote there that he could get. But he hasn't projected any sense of um, mission for this Conservative government. He hasn't talked about the economy. It's all been about putting a few dollars here and there in your pocket. But there's no sense th that I've had from... The broad from conversation him. of what the Canadian economy looks like a decade yeah, from now. How are we're we gonna, we need these how are we going to generate the wealth to, uh, to, to where now every party seems to be spending? Uh, Green Party leader Elizabeth May, um, she she her she yeah. had had what they call you know the Mo in a campaign momentum yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Now she seems to be seems yeah. to be. She, she, the, the, her big disadvantage for me is is sure that her platform you can find a defect to it and everything, but she's she's the one carrying the torch for a kind of ideal in terms of environment. 
she was unable to really take advantage of the mood right now in part of the electorate, especially the youth, because her means are so uh, she, she doesn't have the means to do a campaign like the others. So uh, she ended up not having advertising. They are quite weak on the social media front too, so where they could have been a lot more aggressive. But they don't have the same means than the other party to, and they are not followed on every tract of them like the four uh, principal, yeah. uh, the, the four main leaders. And Bob, has she done a, a, a good enough job, and maybe we'll see more of that in the debate tonight, has she done a good enough job of making the Greens uh, something other than champions for climate? Uh, uh, and No, in that fact. That there are uh, no, economic and, managers. No, that in they, fact, they shouldn't even be talking like that because they have no expertise in that. The one thing that she seems to me she should have been going doing from the beginning was to say, um, you vote for us, we will hold whoever is in power uh, feet to the fire on the environment. We don't have. We can't pr pretend can't to win. know about all these other policies. We're too small of a party. But tonight, the other person to watch for is Jagmeet Singh because I think we all agree he's had a good campaign. He's shown himself to be a much better person or leader than we originally thought he was. And if he can project tonight, despite the format, that might keep. Uh, more that might keep more new democrats in the tent and certainly bring some of the progressive vote with the greens sitting with the greens coming over to the ndp and give them a better chance like yeah. they're competitive and i think it's they're they're in about 30 ridings yeah. across the country but so they what i found mr sheer that uh, mr singh this, what does distinguish him the most is projecting a lot of humanity Mm -hmm. uh, is he look at like uh, the most human the more empathic uh, leader and uh, really authentic so this, and you see that his, num his numbers are better than his party, right. so now it's to translate that in uh, support at the polls. But uh, me, I find that that is distinguishing feature, is humanity. John, what about the notion that uh, having uh, Maxime Bernier in his debate tonight, I mean, I, I've sort of been referring to him as the, the enfant terrible, the disruptor, like who knows, I'm not sure what we're going to see from Max Bernier tonight, but it, it might be a lot of, I'm in the debate, uh, I deserve to be in the debate, and I'm going to take every opportunity to let you know I'm here but I, but I mean, his English is not great so no, it's going it, to be it's going to be a struggle for him I, I think you know I was actually does, does he I mean everybody talk my question was going to be this everybody talks about the, the problem he he's going to be for for Mr. Shear but could he actually do good for Andrew Shear because this is the guy on the far right that's not me could he actually emerge looking something less uh, you know but people trying to make him dogmatic he doesn't he's not going to look dogmatic compared to Maxime Bernier right mm. For sure, maybe, maybe, a bit, but obviously, uh, you know, th there are one or two percent of voters who are, who are looking se seriously at, at Bernier, and Sheer doesn't want to just allow them to go. So but haven't they gone? They're gone, aren't they? they I mean, if, you're, if, you're, if the polling shows that you're a People's Party of Canada supporter, what's the likelihood you're coming back to Andrew Sheer? Unless okay. maybe you think your vote can Look, put Andrew Sheer into a minority government. Bernier's got the party of bigots, and yeah. as far as the Conservatives are concerned, he can you can them. have them. But Mr. Shear made one entry to them. It's with the uh, development aid budget that is reducing 25 percent, right. and Mr. Corny. Bernier uh, is proposing to eliminate it. So maybe it's, it's trying to convince some of them to come back. Those who are more concerned about that, I don't think it will have an effect really, because I, I think, like Bob, that uh, you know this is the fringe of the uh, conservative electorate who in the past have nowhere else to go than the Conservative Party, but who uh, are now in a house that uh, where everybody thinks like them and they are quite happy with that. So I don't <laughs> think they will move uh, to that. Okay, let's finish on this, John. Uh, do we, uh, a lot of people pay attention to debates. Do we, do we, in a campaign that seemed to be, to this point, sort of bereft of the issue that might decide everything, do you think we get it tonight? Do you think there becomes, after tonight, a clearer choice for voters based on what we're going to hear from these leaders? I would be amazed. I would be amazed if there, if there was. I mean, it seems to me it's going to be muddled, uh, noisy, confusing. Five presenters, six leaders, uh, shifting from topic to topic very quickly. Uh, I think it's going to be a muddle when we come out of it. Nothing's really going to rise to the top and crystallize the whole debate. Bob? You know, I think it's really sad because in the United States, there are leader debate all the time. Here in Canada, we can't seem to get our leaders to debate, and when we do, we set up a format that seems to me we'll find out how it works out, but I, I'm, I think this is not going to be a great format. And yet we've seen a good format last week. Yeah, yeah but with me, I think format or not, 
we cannot predict you know the the surprise uh, moment, zinger, yeah. the moment that can uh, you know destabilize one leaders and uh, m do damage so we'll have to check All right, why it will you. not be a, a, on substance because of the rapidity which which it will f switch from one thing to another it was good to have your good to have your uh, your input and your uh, thoughts ahead of the debate, and that seemed to work. One moderator and three people and talking. thank you for giving <laughs> us more time than the leaders will actually have. <laughs> my, my pleasure. Talk to you later.